five years, but they're, they're starting out uh, with $2 million uh, of money allocated to the rebates. It grows to $4 million, and then it's $5 million for three years after that. And it's my understanding that uh, as of about a week ago, uh, and speaking to the point person at Xcel Energy, they believe about half of the first year rebate allocation has been reserved. So um, people are doing a lot of these projects. I know personally I'm involved in, in at least seven or eight of them, um, most of them without the, the grant, the state grant, in addition, where we're just doing it with the combination of the rebate program and the investment tax credit. So the, the only real risk in terms of timing um, on the funds, I believe, is really related to the rebate program. And if we waited too long, we might not get into this year's rebate allocation, might have to wait until the next rebate round, which starts, I believe, July 1st of 2011. Thank you. Mr. Copen. Uh, you mentioned there's federal funds involved, and because of that, the Bacon Davis Act is involved, so that means your, this project would involve, would involve prevailing wage then? Yes. Thank you. It says right in there. So, uh, Parsons uh, is, a, is a union contractor and, and is very familiar with. I'd like uh, to see good paying jobs created. Yes. It says it in the report. Um, so, uh, if I understand what you're saying about the. Uh, well, let me ask this on the on the XL rebate. Then it's it's over five years, um, and there's a lot of competition. You're saying, uh, or there's a potential timing issue to to get in line. Um, if you uh, is it is it known at the time that you are either getting it or not that you have it for the entire five years, or is it a uh, get in line each year of the five years for it? Um, it's my understanding that once you've been given the rebate, you know you're going to get it for that five-year period. Okay. So you All don't right. have to compete for it each year. And is is it is the entire plan uh, then contingent upon actually receiving that rebate that it, it that we, there would not be a green light and let, until it was known that all three parts of that financing plan are together? Well, that would certainly be up up to the uh, to the city the city manager. But it you know I, I don't think that the financing quite hangs together without a major component yeah. like the rebate. Um, we are because we did enter into a non-binding agreement that says the city and our team will continue to work on this um, without it binding anyone, uh, either on our side or on the city side. We were able to get in line for the rebate. So. Uh, when the when the gentleman from Excel tells me that half of those rebate funds for the first year are reserved, we are part of that reservation. Now that doesn't mean we are required by any means mean we're required to accept them, and we can get out of line and let those rebates go to someone else, and then right. get back in line at a later date. Okay, um, because obviously, if if we're talking about uh, getting electricity worth about let's say six thousand dollars a year. Um, uh, on its own, <laughs> straight up, the $385,000 total project financing would not be a, a good payback <laughs> uh, over any any reasonable time oh. horizon. So um, that's kind of kind of key to it. And and I guess overall, the fact that there's that the expense is so high relative to the electricity being generated from it um, makes me a little bit skittish about it. Uh, but I realize that there's incentives and, and that what's going on here is a, a policy desire to demonstrate the success of this in practice and hopefully um, and I'd be interested to know, you know, if there's an anticipation that the, the cost of insulation of things like this will be able to come down dramatically as, as demand, if demand increases and, and things like that. Or is this going to be a, a one-off uh, World's Fair oddity that people will look at 10, 20 years in the future and say, wow, that was amazing. And <laughs> they didn't really have to pay for it, so that's why they did it. Mr. Antonin, do you want to comment? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's important that, one, that... Our staff has went to uh, uh, 10K Solar in Bloomington, looked at the uh, at the uh, the manufacturer of the solar panels. Two that 3M is providing the reflective material, and I understand, although I can't confirm, and nobody's told me f for sure that uh, 3M is also uh, placing these panels. I believe, again, uh, nobody can confirm it. Uh, uh, on uh, either on some of their buildings, uh, perhaps a new uh, innovation center. Although you know, that's just I'm just surmising that. And so, this is is totally new. Um, 
I think you know it's important that the uh, the attorney do the due diligence. Uh, I'm fairly comfortable that you know our non-binding letter has gotten us in line with uh, with uh, Excel, but I really feel comfortable when the mayor and I can sign the contract so that everything is is sort of wrapped up. Um, as you know, I'm a I'm a big proponent of uh, photovoltaic solar energy. Uh, as an anecdotal thing, um, as you know, I went uh, uh, out in August to my uh, my uh, uh, house in California, and I was looking at my uh, energy bill. I have a 2 kW system on that house out there, and uh, so far this year, I owe PG&E thirty dollars for uh, electricity for that uh, three thousand square foot house. So I know the photovoltaics does work in California, and there isn't any reason that it can't work. Perhaps not as well here, but still, I think it's it's something that we have to uh, pay attention and uh, and uh, move forward on. Did you have any comment on, Mr. Mr. Mayor? If I might, just uh, and members, just very quickly about the technology, uh, and to Mr. Nephew's point, um, it is true that we are in the early stages of development of solar energy, um, but it, there is there is definitely a pattern here of of the uh, technology improving, its productivity improving, and the cost coming down. And we are going to get to a point where uh, we are going to get to the Walmart price on solar, if you will. And we're not there yet, and we aren't at the scale to take care of it. I believe that 10K is, is actually made a number of, of very significant advances in terms of the technology for our climate uh, and installation of solar uh, at this latitude line and with our, with our weather conditions. Um, there's a number of features that they have. The reflective film that they use from 3M means that um, the panels can stay stationary so you may have seen their sun tracking panels. In this case, the panels stay stationary, but the reflective film that 3M makes catches the sun at low angle points at the, that period we're entering into now and, and shoots it across. So it sits in a little V like this. The sun comes down, strikes the reflective film, shoots it across to the actual solar panel. Um, they've also done what's called a mesh wiring. So it used to be that your solar panels were wired like your Christmas tree lights. So one light goes out and all, the whole string would go out. In this case now they're wired in mesh. So if a little, if a leaf falls on a panel or there's snow on the bottom of a panel, um, you'll lose 5 or 10% of your output, but the rest of the panel will continue to operate. The way they've structured the, the load bearing, um, and, and this really goes to the question about roof integrity, They've created it in such a way that wind blowing across the top of that panel will actually create a downward pressure on it so it does not have any fastening into the roof structure itself. So it, it, actually, it actually pushes down and there's, in other words, there's no lift under it so you have to secure it down. You can actually, you can actually lay it flat. So if two years from now, three years from now, you do have to do a repair to your community center roof, you simply pick it up, move it over, make the repairs, put it back down. Um, it's completely scalable um, and, and, uh, in, and can be expanded in the future. So if the 40 kilowatt limit is removed at some point, which I believe it will, you could expand this at some point in the future. Mr. Nephew? Um, Follow-up question, uh, particularly during the, the five-year lease period, um, where does the responsibility lie for issues of maintenance? Uh, for uh, damage, casualty, liability, et cetera. Um, big windstorm comes through, tornado hits the community center, things like that. That's a, a, big, uh, a big investment to go up in a, a twister. Uh, maintenance of the system, which is minimal, is built into the agreement. Um, I see that uh, in the case of uh, one of the pro formas I saw, they built in some additional liability insurance. It really isn't any different than the kind of liability insurance you probably carry anyway in the event of a tornado. Frankly, if a tornado hits the community center, you've got a lot more problems than just what happens to your <laughs> solar panels. So it, it becomes part of the structure. And so just in, the, in the normal way that you insure against uh, uh, things that might happen to your structure, you're insured for something that might happen to the solar panels. The, the panels themselves have a 20-year warranty on them. So their 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 construct their manufacture and their quality is and, and the and the the major components that go into it all have at least a 20-year warranty. 
But in, in terms of uh, specifically during the five-year lease period, it would be the city's responsibility to make sure that the policy was written with additional coverage to uh, fund replacement of, of this whole installation if it, if it was destroyed? My, my understanding from other cities that have looked at that is um, they've checked with their agents carrying their insurance, and in some case, cases the agents have told them you're already covered. It's, it would be no different than if you, had, if you have hail damage to your roof or your building, um, you might have hail damage that might affect your solar panels, you're already covered. In some case, they might want to have an additional binder okay. at some small incremental additional cost. It's really up to your, your agent and the kind of coverage you have. Mr. Antonin, you want to comment? Yeah, I think uh, we certainly need to do due diligence on this, but I think there's going to be double coverage because one is the, you know, it's a lease for five years, and so Parsons has a, is in effect the uh, the owner per se, uh, or the leasee. But uh, so I'm sure that they probably have some type of uh, insurance also. But uh, as uh, as uh, uh, Michael said, uh, normally. Uh, that would be, at least in my experience, be included in the, uh, as long as we notify the trust that we've placed this on, there would be included in the building. Uh, and if there were any questions or concerns, uh, it could be just put on as, a, you know, an, as an endorsement or, or a writer. And uh, I don't think that that's going to be uh, a major uh, or even a minor thing, but it's, it certainly needs to be checked out in our due diligence. You know, something can't be both attached to the building and not attached at the same time. So it either becomes part of the superstructure or it's an add-on feature. Um, needless to say, there'd be insurance in either event if it becomes part of the structure and it's destroyed. I mean, most people understand property insurance understands that, you know, what's, what is your roof is now what's on your roof. So we'd be looking into that. I would note that one of the things that they term as an investment is a three-year extended service contract that's part of the, uh, part of the gig. That's 11500 I haven't seen the service contract, so I don't know if that covers things like total loss, but I'm sure that someone will be insuring against it because from what I can tell, it's not owned by the city until the keys are turned over to us at the end of that lease period. So that would be one of the questions that we would have. I'm not certain it comes with keys. <laughs> A switch. A couple, couple of uh, uh, things. Uh, <clears throat> you had mentioned um, that as long as the city uses 100% yeah. of the power. Nice. And so in some of the documents we had, I mean, we're not, we don't have the capabilities in the system storing the power, so we have to be using it as it's generated, correct? Correct. And so um, what if we don't use 100% of the power? Well, technically, it's wheeled, because you're grid connected, it's wheeled back into the grid. Yeah. But, at, at, but at the end of the day, you will have used more power totally than your solar panel will have produced. This does not come close to representing 100% of the power usage at the community center. Unfortunately, it's, it's a, it's a con major contribution to it, but it won't. <coughs> there are other cities that are looking at energy storage um, as a combination with this. That's kind of a whole other piece that we would be happy to come back and talk to you at some future date where you can actually store it, store it up during the day when it's producing and use it further into the evening hours. Um, some cities are actually using a solar-powered backup battery system for their backup power. So when the power goes down, for whatever reason, um, they've got backup supply for their computers and their emergency communications, and they don't have to rely on diesel generators, but they've actually got a, a solar-supplied a battery storage system. But in this case, we aren't proposing that. So we don't have to have some system where we're proving that we're using the power in one way or the other? It's, it's all done essentially through assumption. Unless you were able to f figure out a way to reduce your electrical demand by uh, something in the neighborhood of 80 or 90 percent, uh, you're not going to find yourself in a position where you have more power being produced by your solar panels than you are yourself able to use. All right. Um, I would be interested in knowing, uh, although it sounds like it's not too terribly cumbersome a task, we are going to need to put a new roof on our building at some point in the foreseeable future. And, you know, these panels